To celebrate 30 years of Magic the Gathering, we knew we had to go big. We had to create an experience for fans new and old that would be worthy of three decades of the original trading card game. We wanted a collectible, commemorative, jaw-dropping, mind-blowing thing that would cement itself in our collective memories as we look toward the next 30 years of Magic. Enter 30th Anniversary Edition. Maybe the single most controversial thing to happen this year for Magic, and that's saying a lot because there are quite a few things to complain about. People still don't like the crossover experiment, and your Double Masters 2022 packaging was one of the biggest mistakes you've ever made. It all follows a similar trend of the price going up while the product is going down. So here's the back of the cards. This would make them non-legal in Eternal formats. So if you wanted to play something like a dual land from this set, it would have to be casual and where proxies would be normally allowed. However, the front of these cards are easy to confuse for legit cards. They didn't used to do this. You might be familiar with the gold bordered cards. If you were going to reprint something on the reserve list or reprint any card for an anniversary edition and you didn't want it to be legal, you would give it a gold border on the face. So they're right there dancing on that threshold. Yes, they're not legal, so they technically didn't violate the reserve list, but there are several things wrong with this product, which I have to get it out of the way. I do not have anything against the concept of a 30th anniversary edition that just reprints everything from Alpha. Make it an entire set with gold-bordered cards, or at least the reserve list ones would be gold-bordered, and make it more of a draft set if you were really wanting to celebrate 30 years of Magic. Featuring the original art that inspired a generation of Magic fans, 30th Anniversary Edition is built with modern sensibilities and nostalgic roots. And by modern sensibilities, Blake Rasmussen here means you get the premium feeling of a card that was just printed in 2022, with the extra premium feeling of having an empty wallet. 30th Anniversary Edition will be on sale for the holidays, available November 28th for $999 US. Each display of 30th Anniversary Edition will contain four packs of pure nostalgia reimagined in a modern context. So they're doing the same thing that they've done with their collector's editions, where you get fewer and fewer cards. You're getting 60 cards total. Four of those are going to be tokens. About 12 of those are going to be basic lands. You're going to get 28 commons, 12 uncommons, 4 rares. Maybe you get more rares, and I think you probably do get additional rares. But each pack is 15 cards. 13 of those are going to be in the modern frame, so you're not even going to get a true to the feeling, hey everyone, let's gather around the table and draft early alpha or beta, which would be really cool again if they gave us the gold border treatment. But they didn't, it's just that the reverse is different. The biggest issue that I have with this is that I don't understand who this product is really intended for. I made a joke about this where I said magic is basically the rich kid who throws a birthday party only to have their mother reach out and tell all the friends, hey, you gotta buy them this. You gotta spend this much money on gifts. There's a super paywall in order to celebrate. I hate this product, I really do, and I don't say that a lot. I've said positive things about the crossovers because I thought, you know, 40k was acceptable compared to something like Stranger Things. I think it's less offensive. This is a product that I really just hate because you know it's really more pretentious than anything they've ever done. They are right there again at that threshold, throwing up their middle fingers, and they're going to get away with it and they're going to keep doing it too. Because people will buy this. That's why they have it at a thousand. People are saying that's ballsy. They're going to get a thousand for this. There are people who are foolish enough to spend that. I'm not saying you're foolish for liking the concept of going back in time, but it is very foolish to reward wizards for doing something that is incredibly detrimental to the game. And you might think that, hey, maybe Hasbro will do something. Maybe Hasbro will step in and say, this is clearly a cash grab. Sorry, folks, I've been doing YouTube since 2017, and I've seen it all. Seen several people say we gotta send a strongly worded letter to Hasbro, letting them know that we're fed up with the fact that WotC is sold out. They do not care. What these people don't realize is that Wizards of the Coast is like the top earner for Hasbro, so Hasbro's not gonna go to them and say, hey, you're doing something wrong. Please lower these insane profit margins. We don't like making money. That was never going to happen. And I think the first video I watched about this was Rudy's. Rudy is a minister of uncomfortable truths. And I find myself more comfortable with uncomfortable truths, weirdly enough, because it helps me in a way to find peace. I'm not always angry when things like this happen. I'm just a little disappointed, but we can share our disappointments. That's what's great about the internet. That's what's wonderful about YouTube. I let people know my opinion during the market watch. Commander-related stuff, I let you know my opinions through the retrospective series I'm doing. Again, this is not a product that I think 
has a flawed concept. I mean, the concept, again, is really great, but it is poorly executed and it is priced to sell to very few people. They admit to having a limited print run. So how is it really a celebration? A way to brag to the world, hey, our game's been out for 30 years, but only certain people can buy it because if you've never played Magic, I highly doubt you're going to spend $1,000 right off the bat for only 60 cards. And therein lies the problem. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a soliloquy. My own personal take is that I think if you have a game like this, and again, you are bragging a bit if you're Wizards of the Coast, Haha, <laughs> we're the top earner for Hasbro. Our game's been around for 30 years. Come and join us. But then you throw up a massive premium, a massive paywall. It reminds me a lot of what I love on the side, and I love watching baseball. I'm an American, that's my taste. Baseball's also changed, and it's become more of this corporate culture, where it's all about who owns the rights to broadcast this. And that goes on all baseball season, but the playoffs have started recently. And what really angered me, this got me so frustrated, you had to have a subscription to ESPN. And not only that, but you had to have it through your TV provider. It was so much BS, because all I wanted to do was watch the wildcard games. I was willing to spend, I think, $25. First, I tried going on MLBTV.com, because streaming is usually the easiest way for me to watch anything. But then MLB TV told me, no, there's a black out, you can only watch it through ESPN. So I canceled my MLB TV subscription, I headed on over to ESPN, started up an account there, only to be told you actually need to have ESPN through your TV provider. So I gave up, I said, this is not worth jumping through all of these hoops just to watch the wildcard series for baseball playoffs, because next week, they're just going to be on TBS and Fox, which thankfully I have access to both of those networks, but still. It is the paywall for those who just want to enjoy the game that infuriates me more than anything. What this has in common with this product is that, again, it's a 30th edition. You're advertising to the world we've been around for so long. Come and join our game. With baseball, I can't show that to someone for the first time because I'd be too frustrated trying to watch it on my own. You can't really expect newer players to be excited when you see these cash grabs. You're ripping away piece by piece what made it original, which I think is super ironic with a product like this when you're trying to return to that. It's a continuation of disappointments. It's hard to say that they're ever going to change. It goes back to the uncomfortable truths. You got Magic Arena, you got all these different crossovers. I feel like we've had five sets release in the past two months. Just sensory overload if you're someone like me. If you can't make quality products anymore, just make a lot of them. And that seems to be the Wizards of the Coast model. Create products with fewer cards in them, sell them at a ridiculous premium, call it a limited print run so you have the FOMO factor, and there's your recipe for success. I don't like the product, I'm going to keep saying that. However, I don't think it's going to change anything. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. All we can do is just continue to talk about it. But let me know if you have a strategy in mind to help the community, because I feel as if the collectors deserve their Wizards of the Coast. They've enabled this monster, and they're going to keep getting these cash grabs. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.